Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I'm Simply G and today I'm going to be giving my first impressions, my review of opinions on the new book Leaper from Isaki Uta, which is a recently released title from Iridori Comics under their Iridori Aqua line, um, a doujin publisher who focuses on self-published works, obviously. Um, so I'll get straight into it and I hope you guys enjoy. So I was actually sent a copy of Leaper very kindly from Iridori Comics in exchange for a honest review, which is what I would do anyway. I never want to lie and change my opinion on a title. You know, I'm not going to say something's good if I don't think it's good, but thankfully, <laughs> have happily, Leaper was fantastic. I had already previously read another work from Iridori Comics under their Iridori Sakura line um, called Minekun is Asexual, which is about obviously asexuality. It was part of a whole bunch of titles that I was sent to review for them and that one ended up being my favorite. So when I saw the announcement for Leaper, although it was a different genre and subsequently under a different label, it was a book that I definitely wanted to read and as I said I was very kindly given a copy to read and review and tell you guys all about whether or not you should read it, buy it, support it, um, and to honestly, to make things short, absolutely. There will be a link in the description below, I will also put the link to where you can buy this in a pinned comment. So go buy this book. Really, really go buy this book. So this is a 50 odd page doujin, which is a self-published comic. And that is what Iridori focuses on and they do work very closely with their artists from what I understand. And so this new is the newest work, I say newest. Um, <laughs> It was originally written in 2008, which is when the story starts as well. Um, reading the author note, it was then shelved for 10 years and then given a new chance for publishing or for um, distribution. So 2018 and now obviously it's been a couple years. It's finally made its way legally to English and I'm so happy that it has. So. As I mentioned, this was written and drawn by Isaki Uta. The translation was done by Ed Ayes and lettering done by Tim Sun. Wonderful job all around. Iridori, in my experience of their works, has just always done a really wonderful job of with their with their books. Lettering especially always really jumps out at me. It's very, very professional, very highly integrated into the work. It feels very natural to what would have existed there with the Japanese lettering and sound effects and things like that. And I really appreciate that. I've said it before, I will say it again, that you don't notice how good lettering is a lot of the times until you come across bad lettering. And honestly, Iridori's books, they're at a level that is kind of above some publishers, some mainstream publishers. So I definitely think that on that front, it it's just above and beyond, right? So what this series actually is, a leaper in this world of the story is a person who is born on the 29th of February, born on the, the leap day of a leap year, right? And subsequently, that those children, those people, don't, do not age for four years. For every four years that they live, they're only living one year of their life. So they're on a t totally different time scale from everyone else. Um, and subsequently, it means that they will live much, much, much longer than the people around them. Right? So our main character, her name is Mio Aono, and despite her mother being quite adamant that she doesn't want a leaper child, she does give birth to her little girl 
on the 29th of February. Uh, and thus she and her husband have this, this little girl, a daughter who will only age one year for every four years of their life. And it's not because she has any, the mother isn't, doesn't not want a leaper because she, she has prejudice. She just doesn't want to be changing diapers for four years, which is totally, that's totally legitimate. Really, it's, it's longer than that, depending on how quickly you potty train your kid. But, oh, that would be a lot. <laughs> that would be a big ask. Um, but despite that, Mio's parents absolutely love and dote over her. She was born on the 29th of February, 2008. And so we are following her life. And we, we learn throughout the series that leapers are seen as kind of slow because it does take them a while to develop. They Once she starts school, once she starts like pre-primary, kindy, whatever it is, um, she has already lived 16 years of her life, but she is in actuality only four years old. Um, and she doesn't have any friends. None of the other kids really get along with her because they think that she's a bit of a baby. She doesn't really know how to play properly. And she's, she's always kind of seen as again, dim witted or slow or things like that. But one day, one of her, her, one of the other kids at kindy um, kind of accidentally smashes the the sand castle that she was building and he gets quite flustered about that he feels really bad so he tells her that he will help her build a new a new uh, well a new bird is what she was building um, and his name is yo uh, yo asuma I believe and so he becomes her first friend. She, she and he kind of really get along. He's quite conscientious and likes to look after people, even at, you know, four or five years old. And uh, so he becomes her first friend. But, of course, because she only... It takes her four years to, to get older. He graduates kindergarten much faster than she does. So despite their very close friendship, despite her learning all of the things that he's passionate about, most notably space travel and rockets and things like that, um, ultimately he, he was going to turn, you know, six years old and have to start primary school, elementary school, and leave her behind. And that's something that throughout the course of the book is something that she slowly comes to realize more and more. So at some point, obviously, she finishes kindergarten. Uh, it's taken her eight years versus the two that everyone else has. Her parents are now much older. She's starting primary school. Um, and she's she then, again, has to try and make new friends, try and find people who will, you know, get along with her. And, of course, there's a lot of friction there's a lot of issues but ultimately she makes friends in primary school as well who once again age out and graduate and move on and you know get older while she's stuck in this this state of being much younger and not being able to do anything to do that but she it does make her motivated to try and skip grades to try and catch up to the people that she's met and the people she wants to stay with. Uh, at some point, she gets to middle school, and while she's in middle school, she actually reconnects with the little boy that was her best friend in kid kindergarten, who is now her homeroom teacher, because he's now 27 years old, he's a teacher, um, and he recognized her name on the class register and, and asked for her to be put into his class because he never really expected to see her again. She definitely didn't expect that. And so they obviously are in very different points of their life. She's 13 now, despite being actually, you know, 39 in, in normal years. Um, 
and he's you know in the beginning of his career he's very dedicated to being a teacher and to supporting his students while she's just trying to live the middle school experience and amidst this she's coming to terms with really being confronted by the fact that all of these people that she has particular memories of that she has kept in her mind at a certain age Um, most notably this little boy being a little boy. Now he's an adult. Now he's so much older than her and she can't even, she understands it, but it's really difficult to, to fully internalize that and to recognize that, oh, at some point, everyone I care about is going to be gone. Um, it might not be in the next five, six, seven decades, but... It definitely will be in the next 12. It definitely will be when I'm when I'm turning 50, I would have lived 200 years and nobody I knew from the beginning of my life will still be around me. And there's something really poignant about that. Uh, And it's something that, again, she has to confront when she's faced with the mortality of her own parents who have had a young daughter for far longer than most parents would ever have to deal with. I mean, the fact that you spend 40 years with your child until they reach 10 years old is a lot. Like, that's a big ask. And so the fact that she's probably going to lose her parents before she graduates high school is another big, like, overwhelming sadness. But after... After coming to terms with that, after being confronted with that, she does have a discussion with her very first friend, best friend. Well, he tells her, I am I did want us to stay friends, and I did want us to grow old together, and I did want to go to school with you, but that's not something that will ever be able to happen. And that's just how, how it has to be. It's no one's fault. It's nothing that we could do to to fix that or to stop that we're just on totally different time scales but having this life having this scale of time where you are able to meet so many people and hopefully remember those people it means that those people don't die they don't you have the memory of them you remember them So even decades past when they don't exist in this world anymore, they're still a part of you. And so for the little boy and the young man who who dreams of space and loves the idea of intergalactic travel and, you know, scientific progress into the stars, it's something that he'll never see in his lifetime to the level that she will. And so he asks her, when that does become something that's normal, when that is something that becomes commonplace, that she take the memories of him with her to space to experience that. And it's beautiful, and I get all choked up even talking about it. I I may have cried at the end of this book, which is a huge achievement for 50 pages. Um... It, it was beautiful. It was very poignant, bittersweet, but hopeful. And I definitely see it as something in, along the lines of like Voices of a Distant Star or even to a different uh, level, something like Maquia, where characters, they, they don't, aren't living the same lives as the people important to them. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's beautiful. Um, I know the creator themselves kind of was a bit rough on their unjudgmental of their own art from a decade before, which I think most artists do look at their old art, especially if it's been 10 years and go, wow, like, what was I, what was I even doing with this? But I do think that, you know, it's perfectly fine. There's nothing horrendously wrong with it. It suits the story very well, and it never detracted 
from the experience. I think it's, you know, it's cute comic art. Um, as I said, the translation is wonderful. Um, I think th they've done a really, really good job on, on the book as a whole. The lettering, not only is there a really lovely variation of fonts being used, but all of the the like incidental comment commentary and sound effects and the, all of that are seem to be hand drawn uh, fonts or ha you, replaced by hand and it's it really does oh it it looks good it feels wonderful and I I again commend the team at Uridori if you are someone who is interested in this book. If my comments have given some insight to a book that you may have been curious about or if you don't even know about Iridori comics, they do really release a lot of really interesting titles and I, I although I haven't read everything in their catalogue, um, overwhelmingly I have enjoyed for the most part the titles that I have read. And this one, as part of the Iridori Aqua line. It is a general audiences series. It's one that pretty much anyone can read um, and it's it's told incredibly well and as I said I cried. I cried at the end. I hope that this review, first impression review, uh, is something that you guys will be interested in. Um, namely because I do really think that it's worth the money. Um, the book is currently priced at $5.45 uh, American and is absolutely worth that money. <laughs> it's, it's definitely, if you're wanting to try Dojin, um, especially, you know, licensed, legally available English language, Dojin that supports the creators, that supports a boutique publisher, and the kind of Dojin market within the English market. Uh, I absolutely encourage you to check out Iridori's releases because, as I said, they do great work. Um, it's it's fabulous. I love 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 this book. Um, and as an early work especially, it's just so poignant, it's really powerful. <sighs> yeah, go, go buy this book. Um, as I said, I will leave links in the description as well as the pinned comment where you can buy directly from Iridori. Give them your money. Um, they are totally deserving of this. And I just, I loved it a whole lot. And so, yes. Let me know uh, what you think about this comic if you do read it. Let me know your thoughts, your opinions. Do you agree with me, disagree with me? I'd love to hear it. Thanks again to Iridori who actually sent me an advanced copy for me to read and review in exchange for this re honest review, which has been very honest. <laughs> um, and I hope that people will pick this title up because it deserves to be read. I think that uh, yeah, Isaki Uta, every, all of their titles are really great. So check out their other works as well. If you enjoy this one, um, especially Minekun is asexual. I haven't read Mermaid in a Bottle yet. I know, bad me, but, um, they're, yeah, check their books out. They're super good. Um, and yes, thank you guys so, so much for watching, for listening. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye till then.